All right, so we got a nice guest that is going to be performing the Cafe Clutch this Saturday to a sold out show with a lot of people. It's really insane. I had to pick their brain because I found out that they started performing like literally November and they've gotten such a big buzz it's, it's really crazy to see so uh, yeah our next guest is DJ Moy Moy Test this out. Test, test, test. All right. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 <laughs> I have a lovely guest, Haley, a.k.a. DJ Mwa Mwa. Mwa Mwa. Mwa Whatever you want. I say Mwa Mwa. Yeah. <laughs> but it's Moi Moi, DJ Moi Moi. And uh, DJ Moi Moi has been throwing amazing parties at Cafe Clutch, and I just never met you before and I just had to pick your brain about everything because I was like these parties are working they're like amazing parties and they're so and like your friends are just screaming it so like I just need to know like where like what's the background like where did you come from what did you do yeah um so I'm born and raised in Calgary and then I went to McGill um yeah. and lived in Montreal for five years where I loved partying, like the nightlife in Montreal is incredible. Mm -hmm. And then when I moved back here, I think I was just searching for something similar. Okay. And I've always wanted to DJ, and then Liam with Controller Club gave me that opportunity. Yeah. And it was sick. Yeah. So, but like, to engage, like, it's like one thing to just like want to DJ and like invite people out and all that stuff. Like, how did you, like, to invite people out is like actually an art form and it's very hard to get them out every once in a while. So I'm just wondering how did you get all these people to come to your shows? Did you throw parties before or did you like like what was what was like the initial thing that happened? Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> but I've also um, when I would come back to Calgary in the summer I worked a lot of random jobs, okay. and I think I have a lot of different friend circles, I guess, and yeah. maybe that helps. Like, I don't know. Because sure. well, well, so initially, most places they tell you to throw parties, so I just kind of assumed that you threw a lot of parties, because like they they tell you to throw parties because if you could throw a party, you can get people to come to your party, and there's like 30 people at your party. They, can, they would go to a nightclub. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, like, the initial science behind most, like, events yeah. in Calgary. Um, from, like, if you ever... I don't know if you went to High Fire Habitat, but those were, like... The science was, because I used to work at Habitat for, like, seven years, was throw a party, and if you could throw a party, you can invite a lot of people to this thing, and they will come. Mm -hmm. And it usually works. So yours, I'm just, like, baffled by because I haven't been to any party with you in, like, the last seven yeah, years. No. <laughs> and I haven't, like, I, I haven't really seen it, but, like, people turn up, and it's really cool to see that. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I definitely did not have house parties. I lived with my parents until this year, so that oh was, my like, God. a definite no-no. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Um, when did you start, like, oh, you... It probably was Controller Club. You probably mentioned it, but when did you start DJing? Uh, like November. Right Literally November. Show. Well, I got a controller like the week before my show on December fourth, I think. So like, whatever that is, November twentieth, probably. Yeah. Like, do you not understand how crazy that is? Because like, you know how long it takes for like people to get a show to like work. <laughs> I'm just really blessed because my friends are very supportive. Yeah, you yeah. Like, like that. I feel very. It's all my friends. It's all the community, like for sure. You have really nice friends. <laughs> yeah. Like, and that's really yeah. important. But also, you have good music taste, and you have good 
like I feel like that's also important too is like the music you choose it's really good and everyone just reacts to it and that's like the most important thing is like people reacting to your music mm-hmm. so that's also Liam has been huge for me like Liam has helped me so much yeah Liam is a punk at heart but also just a lovely person yeah he's given me so many chances and honestly it's kind of um a big part of my DJ name, like Moi Moi in Cantonese means baby sister, and I've always kind of been the youngest within my friend group, mm. and I've had a lot of help from older, more wise people. That's that's, that's amazing, mm-hmm. and I get to know what your name means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm also the youngest in my family, so it's kind of like I'm in the family Moi Moi. Uh, yeah. So you didn't... Okay, so I'm so baffled because you didn't throw house parties. No. Like, you, I had parties in Montreal with my roommates, but, like, it wasn't... We didn't, like, mark it as anything. So the reason why I'm baffled is because people in Calgary are hard to get the hell out. And, like, you did it during the pandemic. But I also think people were just, like, starving for something to do. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, that does make sense, but also it's just, like... Especially right now, like, I've been trying to get out, maybe they're just too old, I don't know, but I've been trying to get out my friends, and they don't like going out at all. They just think of it as, like, a hassle, or I'm peer pressuring them, and it's like, I don't know. It kind of irritates me, so, like, when I see things work, I'm like, I need to know how that is working, because, like, there has to be a science, there has to be... (laughs) Because my head, that's, like, how my head thinks. Because, like, I've always wanted to know, like, how people make parties work, how this all happens. But this, to me, personally, it's, like, crazy. Anyone who, the, you, you probably don't even know this. Like, literally, it's 60% sold out. Um, 60% sold, I should say. Which is insane for, like, a party here at Cafe Clutch, which is a new venue that came out 2020 during the pandemic. That is not normal. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't wait for it to sell out. That's what I'm shooting for. Yeah. I mean, if... I feel like I just get really driven. Yeah. And I want it to sell out. It's so funny. Goal. It's so funny. Like, literally, you messaged me being like, what's your email? And it was like 4 a.m. I'm like, oh, sh- she is up all night. It's because... Okay, <laughs> I have another full-time job that I have to do. Yeah. Um, so I can only work on Head Turner after work. Oh, okay. And then it just eats at my whole time because I get oh so into it and so addicted. See people, put in time. It is so much fun though. I've had so much fun doing it. Yeah, no, it's it's been probably our like, it's just cool. To, like it's a brand new event and we didn't like. It's not like you came from the ground up or you came from Habitat or Hi Fi. You literally just it's like your friends showed up mm-hmm. and it's like it's always cool. Like. <laughs> I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to. The last show that you had, the moment you left, everybody left with you. (laughs) I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Liam, I'm sorry. But for real, that's what happened. Everybody left with you the last show you had. Like, it was like jam-packed room. And the moment you just were like, I'm going, everyone was like, okay. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I think what you said about Habitat and Hi-Fi closing down, like, there's not many places. Yeah. There's not many places in Calgary. And, and we're are, starving, but like, like but like usually events. you would like usually people who would have like a sold out show like that, it's they have this connection beforehand and they've talked to all these promoters and all that stuff and then it just like blows up. Yours is so unique. Like it's like it's a combination of people starving and also your friends supporting you cuz it's, like the hardest thing is to get your friends to, to support you and doing stuff like that because I've tried and it's just like they're like cool you do your thing like oh I think cool it's like heightened that too like I think people are more flaky in yeah. general and I am also guilty of that like oh no I'm it's here. fine mm-hmm. like I, I think also I'm I'm not telling people to go out I'm not that's not what I'm trying to say I'm just saying like it's weird to see like people out and that much people out during a pandemic it's just weird and like I don't know how desperate your friends are but it's like also cool to see people interact with the DJ and 
talk and like not talk but like it feels like they're having like this little if you what I've learned from throwing parties is like if like you kind of created this house party vibe every time they show up it's like they're screaming their favorite song because you guys are you guys have screamed it before at a house party or something like that that's kind of what I'm going with that whole thing it's like it feels like a house party and I love it <laughs> but I just haven't seen it work like th that well before I think it also helps too because Cafe Clutch is a smaller space yeah. like it looks way more packed than it does but, but I know a lot of people who can throw parties but they can't get people to come out yeah I think you know my I mean? friends are just amazing yeah you have, have really amazing friends I guess beauty. yeah um did you work with good like so actually you should tell people about you stay up you should tell people about um your event because it's a lot like literally yeah. i thought you were just gonna throw a show but you threw a show yeah a show like literally everyone's involved in this show there's like eleven thousand names and i'm like yeah, what it's like how do i advertise this yeah I know. Well, you helped with that show pass. Like, thank yeah. you so much. Oh, no I problem. No one had to do that. Oh no, that's that's no problem. I I figure stuff out. That's I'm my goal. I'm honestly not very Instagram savvy. Like, I wouldn't have thought to put every single name on Instagram, like everyone's handle. Yeah. Um. But it, it the reason why it makes sense is because people want to know who these yeah, people I'm are. Sorry. Totally. So like they need a they need like a name to like click on to be like oh what. Yeah. Oh what? Oh Teddy celebration. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited. oh my God! From I'm so excited for from Teddy. Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. <laughs> so like stuff like that. That that like gets people excited, especially here in Calgary where it's hard because like everyone's like the only thing here in Calgary is the stampede. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is still great. I'm so excited for the stampede. Thank you. I don't mind the stampede. I think the parties around the stampede are actually really amazing. Mm -hmm. What I do mind. Betty, wait, what? Betty Wap came like four years ago to the Cowboys set. It's like kind of crazy. Like that's insane. <laughs> yeah. That's Sorry, I'm laughing to myself because how did I miss that? I don't know. It was amazing. <laughs> or DJ Polo D too. It's like it's yeah, so yeah. Like I Kate, so I can see the Jersey Shore one, but Fetty Wap. <laughs> Yeah, like, I just, I've, like, like, there's parties around the Stampede, which is epic. Like, I got to open for digitalism, I think, during the Stampede. Wow, that's sweet. Yeah. No, it wasn't digitalism. So, they, like, invite people from, like, Berlin or whatever, just to Calgary. Like, and me is, like, probably one of my favorite, well, was, was one of my favorite DJs at the time. And I got to open for them at Habitat, and... That was like so sick. So, but like, guys, I'm not trying to brag about myself. No, but. that's amazing. That's crazy. <laughs> Let's go to Berlin. Let's go to Berlin. We are in Berlin. This is Cafe Clatch. <laughs> Do you see David Bowie? It's Cafe Clatch. But, um, yeah, like, Stampede always created this, gen like, this this thing where everyone was like everybody's coming from out of town so we're gonna create parties for those people coming from out of town yeah. which is a cool thing about the stampede personally i got tired of the stampede when i was like 12 because really? yeah b because i i it's the same rides mm -hmm. yeah that's true it's the same rides that's over true. and over and, like, again the same like deep fried like, <laughs> excitement like this year what's the new thing it's like yeah, I don't know. They always do that. Oh my god, I hope these levels are good. Uh, I'll figure it out later, but, um... I know, it's a big bag. <laughs> <We're grinding. laughs> so, the deep... Uh, uh, they usually have, like, weird deep-fried stuff to, like, get people going. And I guess the food's cool, but, like, I feel like they just need a new ride. Like, out of, like, it, out of the how many years of them doing it? I swear it's, like, at a hundred, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It must be over 100. I think the first one was before 1920, for sure. But so, it's like, you're not going to get a new ride at all? You're just going to keep it the same? Yeah. 
Like, you're not gonna, like, change it, like, once? They should, for sure. That's all I'm saying. I, I, and I love, like, I love the community the Stampede brings around. I actually, I know it's really weird, but I love how everyone dresses up. Like, it's, it's so weird and, like, sad. I, like, I don't like working with Stampede, but that's, like, where most of us make our money is the Stampede. Absolutely. So. When I first turned 18, I worked the tents until... <laughs> two years ago <laughs> but like literally like yeah. if you go to every bar bar in calgary True. That's when you make I, everything. literally they have millions of stampede parties for corporate businesses mm-hmm. it's like all stampede during that time and it's like it's stressful for some places but like literally i remember working at flame central and it was like daytime show nighttime show daytime breakfast nighttime show daytime and it was like they forced us to work the whole thing and you don't even get paid i i'm uh i don't think i'm allowed to talk about this <laughs> i mean it's a lawless city <laughs> stampede so i think a lot of bad stuff happens yeah well let's just say i didn't get paid well not fair but yeah it's- but it's fine flame central doesn't exist anymore does it do they actually i thought they did no it's the palace now oh it's a yeah true, true. yeah so, the palace is good though. It's a good venue. It's fine. Everything is fine. Better than the Cuban. I hate the Cuban. Maybe Me- that's a hot take, but so like sterile and like not inviting. That sounds terrible. It's like Hall. McEwen Hall. Is that state or is that? No, it's at UFC. UFC. Mm-hmm. It's a hard like. Okay, I I went to Modest Mouse. Mm-hmm. At McEwen Hall, and I actually had like the best time I've had in my entire life. I also went oh. to. Death from Above at oh, McEwen Hall. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. My, my brother-in-law was talking about that concert. That was, yeah, like, I hope they do more concerts like that. I know, but people hate, I don't know, it's a thing right now. A lot of people are pretty pissed off because um, Jesse from Mastercraft worked with a person, like, gave a person, this is what actually happened, because I... Okay, fuck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm naming all the people I've DJed with. I DJed with um, Mastercraft. I'm, it's not. That's it's not about me. But it's really not about me. But like, That's I DJed insane, with Mastercraft at Commonwealth in 2019. We had a two-hour conversation, and we talked about that thing. And he was like, "I gave that person a chance," and now everyone's pissed off at me because I gave that person a chance. So it was a person that was like normal and they were friends before and they worked at, um, they, they did comedy and then they just like, the thing that annoyed me is like they just became like this weird right wing prick, like just a horrible human being. Like that's what happened. They'd started to become that and Jesse knew that person before and everyone is like, oh, well, I'm going to, you, you like that band? Why would you like that band? And he explained to me, I'm like, I, I'm i like, he's, I didn't know this. He's half Indian. Did you know that? Not, like, yeah, Indian from, like, India. I think I did, actually. I didn't know that. I think I knew that just because my brother-in-law was telling me he went down a big death from above. Like, literally told me he was half Indian. He had... Buddhist type of mindset and like he always believed in giving people a chance even if they have contradictory opinions and every single person was like you gave this person a chance so you're enabling them I'm like no you just went to brunch with this person and took a photo yeah <laughs> and then, like <laughs> what <laughs> so anyways um yeah, like I saw them at Death from, I saw Death from Above nineteen seventy nine and he's been really nice to me. He's been really like guiding me through this whole thing. Like being like, Yeah, that's kind of what artists are like. That's just you have to like learn how to deal with this type of situation and you can't control what people say. I'm from Toronto and this is what it's it. this is what it is. It's like yeah. whatever. So yeah. I don't know. He's like, like, it's just, I, I don't like talking about him, though, because it's like, I feel like I'm, like, bragging, and I'm not trying to brag, but that's 
like it was it felt like when when I DJed for them it was like they were like they treated it like a punk show as opposed to most DJs where they're like you play at this time you do this and that's it they saw me dance and they're like what the hell are you doing dancing and I was like what are you talking about and they're like well you DJed for us so get up here and I'm like what <laughs> Like on the stage with them? Yeah, they're like, get up here. You were, you DJed for us. Let's have a conversation. And they like treated it like a punk show, which is, I like that approach a lot more than most DJs, which is, oh, well, you DJ at this time, and now it's my time like to, it's super... time to shine. It's me. It's about me. And like, they were like, let's treat this like a punk show, because we DJ, but we also don't care. <laughs> I definitely do not know any of DJ culture stuff. Oh I'm my god! Ever but like that's that like, but that's like the beauty of this is like, <laughs> literally everybody. I'm not even joking you. It's like you literally started in November. You literally but, started in November. Everybody came out to your show, and it just worked. It was like what? This does not happen, at all. Like it really, like it really doesn't. I've tried. It's, it's very hard to get people to just go to your shows and just, especially, and I know people are starving right now, but like, especially during a pandemic, they have so many excuses not to go to your show that you have to just be like, okay, all right, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's very special to see that. It really is. And I know you probably don't see it, but like, really, I do. It's like crazy. I think I see it. I'm just, I'm so excited and I can't stop pushing forward. So I'm just like, yeah. it's great, but also like, got to keep hustling. Did you have any like media back, media training background? You just like, cause like even your posts, no, like um, even your Instagram posts, like that, I, I know that, I know that filter, but like your Instagram post for head turner is like that large picture and yeah, type of thing. Friend. And that works. Yeah. But, like, it's so cool to see that. And even, like, people following it, it was, like, right away. They just followed it. So. <laughs> I definitely have no background in media. But I've always been interested. Yeah. Um, I love creative work. I just grew up with a, a Chinese mom that didn't allow us to pursue that. Really. Oh, okay. So I went to school for engineering, which is brutal. Um, Wait, which kind of engineering? Just It's called bioresource engineering. It's like agricultural. Yeah. Um, I worked a lot with like animals and farms and stuff, but um, this is, yeah, I've always wanted a creative outlet, I guess. Yeah. But that, I've never had the opportunity to do it. That's so cool. How did you find out about um, Controller Club? Um... One night, I was having dinner at A1 Bodega, yeah. and I was passing, and you guys were having a drag show here, and I came in, saw Liam, and then when I was leaving, Liam like ran after me, and he was like, do you want to DJ? Like, DJ sh a show, and I was like, okay, sure, but then the next morning, I phoned him, and I was like, I actually have no idea how to DJ, but I would be really interested in learning, and he was like, you're in luck, because on Sunday, we're having our first controller club, like, come by. Genius. It happened very Liam is a genius. Yeah. Like, it happened very, very seamlessly. But yeah. I was also so scared. I was like, what if I put myself in? Like, I don't know how to do anything. But that's what you have to do in those type of situations, yeah, I think. Yeah, scary, though. It's yeah. pretty scary to try new things and yeah. to, like, put yourself out there. But it's very liberating to do. It, so if anyone wants to do it, just do it. Controller Club. Mm -hmm. Shout out, to Controller Club. Shout out to Controller Club. That happens on Sundays at uh, Cafe Clutch, usually. If you guys want to learn how to DJ, that's what you do. Yeah. Um, that is so cool. Like, literally... <laughs> fuck, that's genius. I have to, like, actually congratulate Liam for that. That is genius. Just, like, literally chased you down the street. Yeah. No, I'm not even kidding. Like we were at the we were at the lights crossing the street, me and two other friends. And yeah. he's like, hey, Haley, like, wait. It was, yeah, it was amazing. I mean, I don't like to be that annoying, but that worked <laughs> in our <laughs> in like yeah. everyone's favor. No, he his energy is like more people need to be like that. Yeah. No, like I like his approach. I've told it to like many of the people. It's like. It works only because he's, like, so chaotic. Like, he literally is banned from Instagram. What? 
He's not supposed to be, like, he's not allowed to, like, message people anymore. Because he does it so He much. does it so much. Yeah. But, like, it's gotten people here, mm-hmm. and it's it's annoying. It's an annoying tactic, but it's, like, it it's, like... For some reason, the way he's doing it is, like, working. He's, like, using his punk tactics online right now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are so used to the normal, I gotta respect boundaries thing. Liam's literally like, I don't give a fuck. I just want you to come out. (laughs) I want want you to come to the show. And I want you to be there. And he, like, literally chases people down the street. (laughs) (laughs) My God. That's amazing. I didn't even know that. Yeah. That's so cool. Like uh, my manager, I call him. <laughs> he's your manager? Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. I'm I'm like I'm happy that like actually worked out in your favor like Controller Club cuz yeah. I think Liam just wants people to uh, I mean, he says he wants like the younger generation to have like that guidance mm-hmm. into the nightlife. From what I've gotten from Liam. That's yeah. what he's been trying to do for the last, like, two or three years. I think that's amazing, because yeah. I don't really know... I mean, I'm out of touch with 18, 19-year-olds. I don't know where they're going. Yeah, no, I am too. I am too. I'm literally out of it. And um, Liam was like, talk to this person. They do all ages shows. Talk to this person. Like, everything that's booked here, Liam has told me to do. Mm-hmm. Like, that's really what I, I've, like... I haven't even found people. Liam's like, I talked to this person. Can you book them? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And then our shows work, and we're like, okay, that worked. What? Yeah. <laughs> and Liam just, like, tells me. I just, like, literally I'm sitting there waiting, and I'm, li- I'm looking for people, and Liam's like, here, book this person. Here, book this person. And everyone's like, oh, I know Liam. I'm like, how Everyone does- knows him. How? <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird. But, no, like, the, the cool thing is to know that that's how it came about, which was Liam just chased you down the street, and then you just became a DJ right after that. Yeah. (laughs) I've I've always wanted to do stuff like that. Like, I did did one radio show in Montreal, Mm. um, but it was only one time because of COVID. Yeah. But I've always wanted to, like, even work at CGSW and stuff. Like, I've been very into music for my whole life. That's good. Well, you can tell. Like, honestly, I say this with uh, a lot of... Because I've watched a lot of DJs. You can tell when someone's, like, understand what they want to play. And also, you can tell when someone's reading their audience. I think that's, like, the most important thing is that you have really supportive people. And you're reading the audience. And your audience is literally, like, play this song. And you know you would song I want to (laughs) hear. And they're like, and, and then they just start screaming the lyrics, and it just looks fun. Like, yeah. everyone's having, like, a good time. And that's, like, I, honestly what I think the most important part of DJing is. I don't think it's, like, I, I do think beat matching does work, but I think timing is way more important than beat matching, which is, like, what time do I play this song at? What time do I play that song at? Mm-hmm. And that's, like, the more you DJ, I think, for me personally, that's, like, how most parties become successful and long like they last long type of thing is uh that timing is like oh like once you get the timing right because i it took me forever well it didn't take me forever actually it just here's the thing they asked me to open a lot at habitat Mm -hmm. and it used to piss me off because i couldn't get better at closing if you're asking me to open open i'm never gonna get better at closing so it's really what songs you play at opening, and they're like, you're such a good opener. I'm like, I know, but, like, can I close? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's not like I'm bragging about it. It's, it's really, like, no, they know, totally they're, they're, they're trying to, like, I get what they're doing. They're trying to, like, schedule the night properly. So there's, there's the opener, and then the closer has the audience, and you have to have a closer with an audience, and that's just the way it is. It's just because, like, it will keep everybody anticipating and waiting for that one person. It's mm-hmm. so important. So I get that. But what pisses me off is when they're like, that's the only time that you can play. You're like, I'm not going to get better then. Yeah. I'm just not. As a DJ, that's, if you're going to make me open all the time, I'm not going to get better. So I don't know. I, I've, 
I've watched it for a long time, especially at Habitat, and, like, even, like, I've played Hi-Fi before, and, like, it was, like, not the same thing. Hi-Fi is more like a... When I used to go there, it was, like, the most credible place. Like, everyone... Every DJ that was, like, well-known would go to Hi-Fi, like, to play Hi-Fi, and I would be like... How are they getting these people into Calgary? What is going on? Like, like freaking out. And I don't know. I mean, unfortunately, the rent for Hi-Fi was way too high. And the landlords didn't want to compromise with Hi-Fi. So that's why they had to close down. And I thought that just really sucks because we lost that venue. And that's kind of the same thing that goes with Habitat. Yeah. Because I worked... The ba- I worked back in Habitat and it's just like we need these venues save Canadian venues everybody (laughs) I know no seriously it's really sad yeah we don't prioritize culture yeah the same way as other places yeah or just the arts in general so are you like do you want to do like DJ gigs more in the future or do are you just kind of like I want to do this for fun and then like maybe I'll be an engineer like what do you think I definitely do not want to be an engineer (laughs) <laughs> uh, it's actually funny like no one at my company knows this side of me yeah i have like two double lives i want to keep it that way so that you know it's good like yeah. keeping business and work separate is really nice yeah. me personally i've tried to keep business and work separate um when my business doesn't understand the work i do i get really frustrated so I have to kind of put them together. Mm-hmm. Not not because I want to, but it's because if the business isn't going to like compromise with you, even though they're paying you money, and even though you show up all the time, and even though you work your ass off for them, there's like no point. Like it makes me really mad. But um, But for some people, it's just like, I just want to go to work and not talk about it. And then I just want to like go home and then party like like literally the party is better when you keep it separate mm-hmm. it, seriously it's like oh yes yeah. i'm looking forward to it totally. you know yeah no i can see so, that so i don't know i I've, I've like talked about business i hope this is on okay good <laughs> just had to make sure it was on yeah. i talked about business for like a while and i was just like i love it but it's like i don't know like i just i have to have it together I just do it, it. Like I think that's just what it is. So I don't know about you. Like I, if you're more organized that way, which is business than whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I've never had the opportunity to blend them. Okay. Um, yeah. Fair enough. But I do think usually I'm not fully satisfied with one thing. Like yeah. even when I would do lab work at the university, I'd have to have a serving job. But I think if I did each 100 percent, I wouldn't be completely satisfied. Like, I need to dip my toes into both. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So, you, you you don't think you would plan on doing anything other than, like, not DJing, but, like, would you even get into, like, making music? I would love to. Yeah. But that's really intimidating. I need to, like, download Ableton and It's honestly... That stuff. You can get FL Studio on your phone. This is what I tell everybody. Like, like you can get FL Studio on your phone for $22. Oh, yeah. Oh, studio. Yeah. I just don't even know where to start. Um, so there, I don't know if you've heard of Beat Drop before. Mm-hmm. So Beat Drop is a Calgary, now they're online, but they used to be downtown Calgary, and uh, they would teach you Ableton. So you would do Ableton oh. courses, cool. and you'd get like free Ableton and all that stuff, and you would learn how to produce music. Um, Beat Drop has kind of been a training ground for a lot of producers in Calgary especially uh, in the hip-hop scene, but even the electronic scene. There's a lot of people in the electronic scene that went through Beat Drop or were teachers at Beat Drop, and that was their exposure to a lot of things. So if you ever want to learn, everybody, Beat Drop. I'm heading there. Beat Drop yeah, courses. Totally. That's online cool. courses. And That's if you want, I don't know what they're looking for right now. I haven't talked to Mitch in forever. I don't even know what Mitch is doing now. I, all I know is that they went to online. Yeah, with COVID. Yeah, with COVID. And they're just operating online because it doesn't cost them that much money. Mm-hmm. But they're making so much money online. 
it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Love to hear it. Yeah. So if you do want to produce, I suggest Beat Drop. Um, there is also uh, what else is there? Where to start? Usually, how I started is I watched a lot of YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. um, I work with FL Studio only because it's cheaper. <laughs> That's okay. honestly the reason why. It's it was when I started, it was three hundred dollars for a lifetime. Wow. As in lifetime updates, lifetime everything, three hundred dollars lifetime. Okay. That is like the best deal. Unheard of. That's like unheard of, yeah. I'm yeah. So over subscriptions. <laughs> it's like I didn't realize it was a per year thing. I was like, what? Yeah. It's crazy. I get it. They, that's how they make their money. Yeah. But it, that, yeah. They trap you, though, because then all of your data is stored yeah. within them. It's so hard to like, move anything. Yeah. No, I agree. It's amazing, though. But like, I, I, I've tried to take the route where it was like, I'm not spending that much money being a producer because if it doesn't work out, I'm fucked. <laughs> at Ableton, it's like you literally have to spend eight hundred dollars once. No, eight hundred dollars every new update. That's oh Ableton. So it's not that I hate Ableton. I actually have done stuff on Ableton, and it makes it easier for you to perform live on Ableton. Mm -hmm. FL Studio is really impossible to perform live. I figured it out, but also I had to work with Tractor for ten years. <laughs> to figure it out like it, it, it's hard but like Ableton literally it's it's crafted so you can play live and you can produce yeah. it's really cool so I mean if it depends on your workflow it really does like if you like the ones where you can play live and you don't have to spend $800 like I did that's what it is um, FL Studio now by the way is a thousand dollars for lifetime updates, and I get it, inflation, whatever. But yeah, I guess it's still not that bad. That's uh, a yeah. lot up front, though. <laughs> it's a lot up front, but also lifetime. Yeah, lifetime's crazy. Lifetime? Yeah, it's like a cent a day. <laughs> yeah. Like, I would like definitely like. I'm happy I got in before, <laughs> and now it's like on Mac now. I, I think people use Ableton more mostly because it's. Like, it's friendly to Mac. Um, FL Studio is friendly to Windows, so I use Windows, and that's kind of why I do that. But I do recommend it. Mm -hmm. Also, I haven't asked you this. What type of music, like, what was your first song? What type of music are you into? Like, what is your vibe right now? <laughs> that's a hard question. Is it? Yeah. So do you like a lot of music? I, like, I think I have like a, okay, for instance, when Liam told me that I had to like choose a genre to play at my first event, I was like, I don't know how to choose one. Um, that's like, that's like, my life really story. Really yeah. That's like my life story. Like really. I've, I've, I remember people were like, I like went to like a lot of house clubs and they were like, what are you, what are you playing? What are you doing? And I'm yeah. like, I'm playing house. They're like, no. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, if it was Deep House, it's this. If it oh was... And they, like, started to, like, name everything. And I'm like, but I'm, like, playing all this music. And they were like, well, whatever you're doing is amazing. What? I don't get it. But, like, I don't know. Like, I think, like, that's, like, the important thing is just, like, playing what you love. Mm -hmm. You know? I don't know. Like, is there, like, a type of... If, how about this? How, who is one of your favorite artists? Like, what's an artist that, like, just inspires you the most? Okay, this is the thing. It's, like, controversial because... Uh-oh, is it Kanye West? Oh, my God. Well, I, I honestly, I love Kanye. Like, I have a lot of respect for him. I think he has a lot of mental health issues. Mm -hmm. But I think he's a musical genius. But um, I love John Mouse. Like, I love synth. Oh my god, But yes. I know that John Mouse is problematic because he was... Yes! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Jess loves John Mouse no, too. No, it's like amazing. Like I love <laughs> Synth so much and like everything that he does, but he's... But also we don't have to bring politics into it. As a musical artist, I, I really, really... No, like, what happened was John Mouse attended uh, one event that, like, it was, like, one of those inauguration events. January 6th. Yeah, the horrible, horrible event. 
Um, and, uh... <laughs> but, like, literally, the annoying part about it is that he has a song called Cop Killer. Like, that's what, like, makes me mad. It's like, you have a song called Cop Killer and you attend this event? How does that, like, how does that, like, add up? I think he maybe he just likes being a troll. Like, I don't know. I sure. don't know. I, I like. There's a time and a place to be a troll. That was a that little. Was not, that was like the wrong time. No, I mean that's that was why like I've never absolutely. Because I know, like. Yeah, like. I don't add him to anything. And sorry about uh, anyone who likes Ariel Pink, but I hate Ariel Pink. <laughs> I like a lot of his music too. But yeah, I mean they're BFFs. I think they went to like school together. They probably did. I just. Yeah. I, I don't know. I've tried to like Ariel Pink, and everyone's like, "They're the, that's the best thing I've ever heard." I'm like, I like two songs by Ariel Pink, two. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Which ones? I I don't even know. <laughs> I like like what I do is I go through my like YouTube playlist and whatever, and I'm just like, "Oh uh, well, this sounds cool. Mm -hmm. That sounds cool," and that's like what I do. And sometimes they're memorable, and sometimes they're not. And mm -hmm. that's kind of my litmus test of whether the song's good or not because I will remember it if it's really good so yeah. that's kind of what I do I know that's really arrogant but I think every artist I kind of treat every artist the same not like oh this artist is to this standard oh this is the Beatles you have to treat it like that no mm -hmm. it's like hey if I like your music cool but yeah. you know what I mean definitely yeah totally. <laughs> so that's interesting John Mouse I don't know there's a lot like I love Fortet and like his other alias yeah um, uh, like the you like the burial type of sound yeah for yeah. sure um, obviously Arca like all throughout university I'd only listen to his album Mutant yeah um, Arca I, um, I, I think Arca is it's not that Arca is above me there it's it's that I think I maybe missed the boat because I, just as an artist, you like you can't listen to everything. Mm -hmm. You just can't. So it's like, Arca kind of came out and created this whole hyper pop thing that I can't describe. It's like, it's awesome, but it's crazy because I never thought he was hyper pop until. Because his earlier stuff is like, I would just say experimental. So it's like yeah. interesting that now he's like considered a hyper pop artist. Well, like Sophie, I, I, I knew Sophie mm -hmm. in 2013 because um, after Shambhala, everybody came back from Shambhala and they were like, have you heard Sophie? And I was like, what? Did Sophie play at Shambhala? Sophie played at Shambhala 2013, way before, way before they got big. Yeah. Way before. And like people were like, you have to hear this song, you have to, and I was like, okay, I heard the song, and I was so confused, because it sounded like, it sounded good, but also it sounded pop, mm -hmm. but also it sounded different, yeah. and I didn't know what to call it, yeah. and then like, the 2019, which is crazy, but 2019 is when they did a playlist called Hyper Pop on Spotify, and everyone was like, have you heard of Piper Pop? <laughs> and like, I was like, yeah, Sophie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the whole PC music movement. Mm -hmm. Like, that whole movement was like a thing where everyone was like, oh my God, have you heard Hannah? Hannah Diamond and freaking AC, what is his name? AJ Cook. AJ Cook. Yeah. AJ Cook. And... I guess AJ, AJ Cook was the one who started the label. But yeah, I think they, he did, or they did a lot of producing. Yeah. Yeah. So that hyper-pop movement has been around for a bit. It's just people didn't know what to call it at the time. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. weird. It was genuinely weird. I didn't know what it was yeah. when I heard it. I was like, the or fuck? Slater, too. Slater's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's so much. Like, there's so much. Like, I used to, I, I'm obsessed with Sophie. Like, mixing and, like, as a producer, mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with Sophie. And it sucked that they died, like, two years ago. Yeah. But, fuck, like, mixing-wise, uh, oh, God, like, I don't know how Sophie did it. Like, as a producer, it's insane. I'm still, I can't believe they're at Shambhala. Like, I, <laughs> I'm blown by that. <laughs> I just didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. No, this was like 2013, 2012, 
Like, Shambhala has kind of been, like, the reason why people love Shambhala so much is Shambhala has been the forefront of a lot of music. It's always been the predictor of a lot of music. Mm -hmm. It's the same with Terminus Festival in Calgary, which has been predictor of a lot of goth music. And now people are starting to notice how crazy Terminus has been, but they've been like that since, I don't know how long they've been going, but since forever, they predicted every single thing that's big right now, Terminus had them before, and everyone was like, what? Oh my god. And they're like, I love Chris from, Chris from Dickens Pub, shout out. <laughs> but like, Chris is a genius in that sense where he just really put his heart and soul into artists that like people don't know mm -hmm. and then people just end up discovering them and it, now he has like this subculture that's like crazy so a lot of events like in Canada people take for granted and that's what makes me really mad that's what makes me like that's kind of why I'm like oops that's kind of why I'm like so excited about your shows is because it's like people are showing up to it and it's like so cool to see people actually support. Mm -hmm. No, totally. You know? Yeah, I'm really, really excited. We have like a really good lineup of DJs. We did it. We did it. Tell, like, tell them, tell okay. them your lineup. So the lineup, I'll be um, basically Head Turner is a multidisciplinary art show. So we have four painters showing pieces. There's going to be a live painting happening during the show, which is so cool. That's so epic. Vice is going to paint. Live. Nice. It's going to be so cool. Um, then we have 601 Royale coming. They're a clothing company in Mission, a thrift store, but also they have their own fashion label called Studio Hex, and hopefully they bring some original pieces. Um, we have a video artist coming, and then I'll be playing music during the art show, just like opening, setting the vibe. That's but it's be... just going to be background music. Yeah. Um, and then DJ Teddy Celebration will be after me. Because they have kids. They need to be home early. <laughs> they have kids. Yeah. Um, but that's going to be awesome. Because they haven't played a show in a long time. That, that's, I saw the name and I was like, I, I've always seen DJ City Celebration at yeah. Commonwealth. Yeah, and Good Luck Bar. So and were, Good Luck Bar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they were an owner of Good Luck. So. Oh, that was the owner? He, yeah, they were one of the owners. Oh my sure. God, I didn't even know that. That's cool. Yeah, I mean... I'm, 99.9% .9 sure. Yeah. No, that's cool. No, I didn't yeah. know what was going on at Good Luck Bar. That's really cool. Yeah. I'm going to um, pick his brain when I see him. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Ted. Shout out to Ted. And then Cal is playing after. Yeah. Gay snakes. Amazing. <laughs> I saw their set at Warm Leatherette and I was like, what the hell? Like, this is amazing. Cal. They have like star power. Cal is. What I love about Cal is the fan. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Once I know. the fan comes it's out, Cal amazing. is in their so. fucking element. <laughs> A fan, and just like, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. It was amazing to see. Like, I was, it was so magnetic. No, um, yeah, like, yeah. that's like how you could tell Cal's in their zone. Yeah. The fan, that fan is just like, Psh. and I'm like, oh shit, shit's crazy. about to go down. Yeah. <laughs> and then after Cal, we have a very special guest. Ellie Otto is coming to Ellie play Otto. a set. Yeah. Explain that. Okay, so Ellie Otto, in my opinion, probably like the most famous artist in Calgary right now yeah. because they had a huge song that went viral on TikTok called Sugar, Sugar Crush and it has like 300 million hits on Spotify. Wait, wait, what? Sugar Crush. Like, you know that song? I do, but I, I just like, like literally it's clicking, but I'm also like, they're from Calgary? It's insane. Okay, so as soon as, <laughs> as, soon as Liam told me well, you and Liam kind of were like, would you ever want to do your own thing? As soon as that was in my head, I was like, I need to land Eliotto because I knew they were from Calgary. I knew that they were like 18, still in high school. In my head, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to DM them because they're probably just in their parents' basement. Like, what else are you going to do in Calgary? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, you're Who right. Who knows? Like, I just, Liam helped with that, though, because they have more followers on Instagram, and I didn't know if you're famous regular DMs go to like a separate thing so yeah. he wasn't seeing any of my DMs yeah. um, so Liam helped land that but yeah Eliot is coming they're excited to be part of something in Calgary it's incredible they've never played a show that's big <laughs> I know no, no no that's big they're gonna do like a DJ yeah I have to meet with them this week to like show them the controller and stuff but they'll be fine if they're like they'll be fine 
They're going to DJ? Oh, they... They're doing a set. And then after them, Shannon, um, Shannon Hart and DJ Cool Jeans are going to close. Nice. DJ Deleted Tweets is Shannon's DJ handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know them. Shannon Hart, yeah. DJ and Deleted cool Tweets. Cool Jeans is Jillian. I don't know their last name. I don't know Jillian. Name. Yeah, friends of Shannon. I know Shannon Hart, but yeah, that's, that's an epic I show. I to... You curated a show. <laughs> Do you understand how hard it is to carry a show that perfect? I don't know what to say. That is fucking insane. Yeah. Like that is no, like that is legitimate. That's that that's what people do at like clubs where they like have certain people at certain times and like they're actually thinking about that. It's like you don't even like you you just told me you fucking started in November. What? I think Liam has helped me though. Okay. Just realize that I can DM people, and the worst thing that they're going to say is no. No. So I've just been like, yeah. hey. Actually, Jess has helped me on that, too. Because, yeah. like, Jess was like, hey, Actors follows you on TikTok, and Actors is, like, a band from Vancouver, and they got really big during the pandemic, like, huge. And But they've played here before. they played in Calgary before, but they, like, follow me. And I'm like, why are you following me? And Jess was like... You should DM them. Yeah. And she's like, they're just going to say no, or they're not going to say anything. Yeah. Like, the worst thing that happens is... Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And they responded, and I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I can see, though, how people get reeled into the endorphins of social media, though. Yeah. Because now I am, like, glued to the head turner Instagram, which Oh, I, it's like, beautiful. I hate, though, but I'm, I want, yeah. I'm addicted to it. Oh, my God. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up because it's probably going to go on forever. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. I'm having, for a, I'm having like, a fun time talking to Haley. We can talk off camera. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. It's 51 minutes. Um, uh, but, like, uh, I just think people need to know who you are, like, your social medias, and all that good stuff. Where are you from and all that. And... It's like the call to action, and uh, when's your next show? This will definitely be out before your next show, because it's just easier to sell videos yeah. to people. Yeah, fair enough. As, uh, I don't know I'm sorry to be a salesman, everybody, no, but it is. It's just so easy to sell videos, yeah. and people actually watch them if they want to. But tell them, your Instagram handle, everything, Hint Turner, yeah. all that's going on. Tell them, I can tell them. Where you can buy the tickets, but... Yeah. Okay, everyone. HeadTurner403 is the Instagram handle. Um, all ticket proceeds are going to Good Neighbor. It's $10 on Show Pass, but you can also buy tickets at the door. However, we recommend that you buy tickets ahead of time to secure a spot. It's going to sell out. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's definitely selling out. It's, yeah. Like, I just know. Like, it's crazy. We're 60% right now, everybody. 60%. So please, buy your tickets. And we haven't even dropped that Ellie Auto is performing yet. Like, I'm going to drop that tomorrow, probably. Oh, my God. Um, so hopefully, like... Also, it's an all-Asia show, which I think is missing in Calgary. Yeah, like, we lost our venue, Tubby Dog. Yeah. So this is the only venue right now in Calgary that does all-Ages. Yeah. Well, there are, there's other venues, like Broken City does. Broken City has a time limit on when they do all-Ages. Cafe Clutch operates just like Tubby Dog. And that's their license, just like yeah. Tubby Dog. So, um, anyone who's into all ages, please, like, we need you. We need you guys to come out. <laughs> just create a new commute. Not a new, because we're already existing, but yeah. community in Calgary. It's beautiful. Great. Community in Calgary, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, Head Turner. This is DJ Moy Moy. Mm -hmm. um, I would ask more questions then it'll end up being three hours long <laughs> I'm sorry I just picked your brain out because I'm like holy crap like this is all like amazing and there's a lot of people involved in this event and yeah. I'm happy Liam's been helping you out like and been a real guidance because we just need people like that in the community to support yeah. people who want to do stuff like this and so far, you've done it the best out of all the people I've seen. Stop. For real, though. Thank you. Like, I'm not trying to, like, brag, but it's really, like, you created even a short amount of time to create that much of a buzz. 
is very, very impressive. Thanks. So I, I'm sorry for like, no, but no. like it's just it's so impressive. It's like, whoa! I wish I understood how this happened, which is why I needed the interview. I was like, usually I interview musicians and all that stuff, but I saw your buzz and I was like, I need to know. What? It's not me. Like, it's a full production behind. Like, I have so many people helping me. Like, all the photos on Instagram, my friend Steven helped with. And he yeah. is, like, a professional photographer and offered his skills to Head Turner. Yeah. Yeah, just everyone has been very, very... Um, it's been a collaborative process, but everyone's been more than willing to help, which has been... Like, the support has been incredible. It's... Cr- I'm, I'm like flap like I, I just I mean it I'm like wow this is amazing and I just like I, I just I wish more events were like this where people are helping people out like this because like yeah. in, in Calgary especially it's always been this like protective we're trying to protect our genre we're trying to protect this and yours feels like wow like I just wanted to do an event <laughs> like it literally feels yeah. that organic like yeah can I just try this and then people are like, yes, you can. Let me give this to you. Let me do this for you. Let me do this for you. Yeah. Like, I've never... Oops. <laughs> there goes my phone. Um, I've never seen that before. So, seriously, everybody, please support DJ Moy Moy, a.k.a. Haley. Also, I have to give a shout-out to Nicola and Steven for making the logo. I did not make the logo. Even better. Yeah. Nicola and Steven for making the In logo. California. In, In California. In California. California. But they're from Calgary. And they also wanted to be like, shit, Calgary, like, we're excited that this event's happening. Just everyone from Calgary Woo. getting together. It's emotional. I'm, like, nervous and excited now. I'm working your show. <laughs> it's going to be a big one. Yeah. It's going to be so fun. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for this My interview. Pleasure. And thank you for lending your computer, because I forgot <laughs> mine, because I got wasted yesterday. No, all good. Um, Hang the DJ. Hang the cool. DJ. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, Something see you I need guys to the head turner. Bye. See you, everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs>